the judiciary, which is the one branch where you have judges and decision makers who are not popularly elected, but persons who are appointed by a process which is initiated by politicians, but need not end there. <coughs> One in which you've got people who make decisions over life and death, make laws, and they're not from your community. They're not from your community. Now, there are those who often say, well, Maurice, you know, you seem to have this concern about foreigners. And they're right. Not because I'm anti-foreign. I can hardly do that. I myself wasn't born here. Not because of that, but I sense in all of this, more than just a slippage, is the essence of a responsibility that you commit some of your most cherished possessions to the hands of persons who are here today and gone tomorrow. And I would not mention how much is involved in transfer payments with respect to these persons who come here at the end of their judicial or legal careers in other jurisdictions, only after they would have left after three or four years of service to have payments being remitted to their wives or widows after they're gone. Now, it is a very good moment to me sometimes that I have an issue for a client and I must have a judge. But it is important to me, and I continue to ask myself this question, how long can we expect to be able to rustle up, he uses a little cowboy term, judges from everywhere? And ironically enough, we don't go really to places like England and New Zealand or Canada to see whether we can find some decrepit judge or some retired judge to come here. No, no, no. We go to places where we believe the value of our dollar, paltry sums as we pay them, is likely to attract these people because we continue to make the excuse that we cannot pay for judicial services, and so we bring anybody in here. And perhaps any one of you, outside of a social gathering, can say that you know of any Bahamian judge or legal scholar, anybody who writes. You see these things being played out, and they play out sometimes in very nasty ways. I was embarrassed to see being played out this whole episode with Mr. Justice Lyons. Now this is a judge with whom I've had great difficulties, but we always <laughs> laugh and talk with each other. We are lawyers. But what was sad about the whole affair was that it reflected exactly some of the problems that we face. Here you have a judge or had a judge who at one point in time was brave enough, even as a non-indigene, to say that you've got problems in the administration of justice. I, as a judge from Australia, have a different sense of value. I will not allow matters to come before me in which the representation of indigent people is less than sufficient. I will not allow the prosecution of offenses where people are not even given time to prepare a defense for themselves. And whilst it is important to me to also, whilst I'm speaking, this is Judge Lyons, to point out to you that the conditions under which I work are such that I can't explain why it is that I'm here even now, but I like this place. The truth of the matter is, the terms and conditions under which I agreed to stay in this place are appalling. You 
hear no comment from anyone else. You do not hear comments from your Chief Justice. You have nothing coming by way of the other judges. Then you see the judges at each other's throats. Now, I have been in situations in this country where